So we all love a classic red lip, at least in theory, but more on that later. But like with any bold look, the devil is in the details and little mistakes can show big time when you're dealing with a bright lip color. So today I'm gonna go over my quick five-step routine for getting flawless red lips that last, or any color you want, really. It's nice to have options. Step one, scrub it. Nothing says luscious and kissable like dry, cracked lips. No? Just me? Okay, kidding. But seriously, when you're going to be purposely drawing attention to your lips, you want to put a little prep work in so that way they look nice and smooth. Long wear and matte lipstick formulas are particularly unforgiving and they can be drying, so I like to use a lip scrub. I'm a big fan of Fresh's Lip Sugar Scrub, but you can also use a clean dry spoolie, see mascara wand, or a little brown sugar mixed with Vaseline to DIY a lip scrub. Then I apply a really hydrating lip balm and I usually do all of this before I start my makeup so that way it has time to soak in and my lips are really moisturized by the time I apply my lipstick. Step two. So I always use a little bit of concealer or foundation on my lips before I apply bright lip colors. Neutralizing the natural color of my lips is going to help my lipstick wear truer to shade and stay bright and vibrant longer. And it's also going to lay the groundwork for a sharp, clean lip line because now the color will only be exactly where you put it. I top this off with a tiny bit of translucent powder which will keep your lipstick from bleeding. Step three, light it, pop it. Twist it. If you're using long wear liquid lipstick, which is 100% my preference, because if I'm going to put all that work into a perfect lip, I want it to stay with me for a while. You can just take a lip brush or a liner brush, or even the applicator if you're feeling really sure of yourself, and use it to line your lips. Now, if you're using a cream lipstick, you're going to either want to go with a liner pencil that matches your lipstick's shade exactly, or else you're going to end up with an accidental ombre, which, could be fun, let's play it fast and loose. Now if you like things on the more predictable side, go with a nude or a clear lip liner, that way you know exactly what you're gonna get. Lip liner that will go with any lipstick. Versatility is never a bad thing. I start lining my lips by creating a little X right over my cupid's bow. Then I create a little dash right in the center of my bottom lip. Now that you've found your north and south anchor points, you can go ahead and fill in your corners, making sure to carefully line them up on the top and the bottom. Now the key to doing this is keeping your mouth open, but in as natural of an expression as possible. That over-exaggerated O face we tend to make, you know what I mean, don't make it weird, is going to make it hard for you to line up your corners correctly because as soon as you relax into a normal expression, everything's gonna shift and it's not gonna be in the same place. Now on each side, you're just gonna fill in corner to center on the top and the bottom. Sweeping from side to center in an arc is going to help you create the fullest lip possible. Step four, fill it in. Now this is exactly as easy as it sounds because you've already done the hard part. Don't relax too much though. Lipstick knows when you're not paying attention and it may use this opportunity to get out of line. <laughs> See what I did there? Constant vigilance. All right, step five, wrap it up. I just run a little concealer around the edges of my lips so that way I have a clean, crisp line. You can also use this concealer to cover up any places where the lipstick may have tried to escape. Now, unless you're into the look of lipstick on your teeth, in which case, proceed. I recommend getting rid of any excess product. Pretty easy, but sometimes I forget to do it. I always regret this. I recommend setting your lipstick with a little bit of translucent powder. Just place a Kleenex over your lips and then take a small fluffy powder brush and gently pat the powder onto the Kleenex. Setting cream lipsticks is going to make a huge difference in their staying power, but it won't help long wear liquid lipsticks that much because they're already so 
long wear. The biggest difference to setting those is that if you use an HD powder, it's gonna blur the lines in your lips and make them look smoother and softer. That's it, you're ready to hit the town. Now if you're having trouble picking a good red that's right for you, a good rule of thumb is to base it on your skin tone. Warmer toned skin looks really great in warm coral orange based reds. And cooler skin tones look really good in cooler pink toned reds. Of course rules are meant to be broken and I wear both all the time. So don't feel like you're limited or put in a box. Now, if you're struggling with the whole red lipstick situation because you're normally more of a natural girl, the best way to get confident wearing red is just to do it, like a lot. I used to be a little shy about wearing red lipstick until I worked for a company that decided we were going to wear red lipstick every day for an entire month for part of a charity drive. By the end of that month, I had no problem rocking a red lip anywhere I went with confidence. Though to be honest, I took a long break from it after a whole month straight. You also don't have to jump straight into the boldest, most opaque lipstick in existence. Though it could be fun. You can always start off with a red balm or gloss that's going to be a lot more toned down and honestly, a lot easier to apply. Look, Ma, no mirror. So that about does it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and if this was helpful for you or brightened your day a little bit, feel free to like and subscribe so that way you don't miss any of the videos coming out for you guys on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And feel free to share if you know of anyone that could use a little sunshine in their day.